Today's one day build is I'm going to build a stand that turns this into a small upright portable bandsaw. And I believe I have an idea for being able to adjust the speed control on the trigger here that's pretty neat. So without further ado, let's get started. There you go, everybody. A tool I've been needing for a long time. And finally, I've got it set up in the shop. I'm really happy with how this came out. Thanks for joining me on this one day build. I'll see you next time. Wait, don't go anywhere. I know I said it was done <clears throat> and I'm really, really pleased with how this turned out. It's fit and finish is, is, is really an improvement on my standard tool modification program, but there's still some stuff to do. And I'm going to, it's now this next day. I'm going to take some time to do those things. And here's what I am going to do. Actually, that'll be in the next shot. All right, here are the improvements that I immediately know that I need to make to this, um, to, to this device. One is I absolutely have to make a little housing that covers over this switch because those are exposed contacts. Metal dust literally falls into here. I, I can't have that. So I got to make a little, a little housing. Second of all, I want to add speed control. I know I put in this little uh, thing to hold down the trigger, but in fact, I want speed control to be variable on this. So I'm going to make that work. Uh, and then in order to make speed control work, I think I'm gonna have to cut a hole out of this right here. That's not gonna affect the strength at all, which is great because I don't want to affect the strength. Um, and I think those two mods will make this, uh, I'll be able to call this done. So when I'm looking at this housing, I'm thinking that what I really want to do is I want to make a, a quarter inch ply uh, little shroud with three sides that allows this wire to go through, but butts all the way up right against the wall. Um, so that is going to create the least amount of ingress for any metal powder. Um, but I'll also use a couple of screws to hold it in place so that uh, it's removable, right? I got to be able to service this thing. Um, and I guess I should start by unplugging it because it's still, it's still hot right now. That's kind of neat. Let's do that.
All right, well, ooh, I got my, let's see here, better. Uh, I got my little, uh, my little enclosure here for the switch and it's really nice because it uh, protects the switch all the way around, which I like in a little power switch. Still makes it totally easy for you to get at the, at the blade there. I think I may round both of these corners just a tiny bit, just to kind of like, uh, just to make this a little more friendly. Uh, and I may do that with this corner too, just like, just take off a little bit of that. But the big project to add to this today to make it a completed tool. Oh, I also put back the handle because that's how this thing's gonna live. Oh, and you know what? I might make a cleat here for storing the, uh, the power cord, but that'll be, that'll be an easy deal. Um, really the biggest deal is to make the speed controller. And can you see, yeah, there you go. You can see the switch in here. So what I want to do is I want to, I want to make a, uh, a handle that goes here. And when you spin it like that, it, <coughs> Yeah, it's it would be a uh, it would be a screw this half inch thread here with some nuts on it and a little carrier that would go up and down pushing down this trigger here. That's the goal. <coughs> I drew it up last night and I'm pretty pleased with how it looks. It is going to be a bit of a tricky fiddling to get it all operational, but I think it's quite doable. Um, I'll need, uh, yeah, I will need some mounting point here. I mean, it can just be a thing right here. Uh, and I'll have a nice long lever arm. So I should be able to quite easily control it. I just have to machine off, uh, the two sides of this thing. You know what? Yeah, that's pretty much it. I need to, uh, yeah, what is this? What is this ID? 0.3125, yeah, so that. Okay, uh, 
Yeah, I got to start making some parts for this and then start installing them. And again, it's got to be removable. So uh, how this will go at the end, I may actually put a little plex window here so you see inside. I don't know. We'll see. But time for some machining. Yeah, it'll be interesting. I'm kind of wondering if I can't just pressure mount it to this thing with washers and thrust bearings and then have a little yoke on it. And I don't need to then capture the bottom. I think that if I have this like this, I should be able to do it. Let me pull out all my bearings and stuff and see if I can't get there. Hmm, hmm, hmm. All right, uh, I have some, some nylon washers and some thrust bearings here. And I wanna play with all of this stuff because I, Look, I'm basically attaching a crankshaft to a threaded rod so I can thread up and down a nut on a yoke that's moving up and down that rod. Um, I could capture that rod at both ends by building a little box for it, but that's a lot of engineering for something I don't think I need that much strength for because it's seriously just a singular downforce. And along with these really nice little thrust bearings I got, so a thrust bearing is a really neat little toy tool, um, it's a little bearing race with a top and a bottom. And when you put pressure on it, you still have a really smooth turn. You put some really reasonable pressure on it and you still get really nice like boop, boop. And I feel like that'll give me the right amount of pressure this way, holding onto the plate and a good amount of crank power. But I need to know how tall I need to make it. So um, I'm gonna take this half inch threaded rod and machine one end down to 5 16ths and thread it and use a nylock nut to do the tightening on top of this business. So how tall, how much of that? So how much of this do I need to machine down? Well, that's what we're about to answer. So uh, we have a nylon washer and a thrust bearing. Then there's the table itself. Then there's another thrust. Oops. And there's another thrust bearing and then another nylon washer and then the crank and then a nylock nut. So let's see here. All right, that's enough room for a nylock I like that. I love this red handle. Okay. That's one, 1.75. That's 1.75. Yeah. I'm comfortable with that. So I'm going to machine this down, thread it with a die. And then uh, try this out. Here we go. All right, so I have uh, successfully turned down the top of 
my uh, half inch shaft by uh, a little bit over one and three quarter inches. That's great. Uh, so now I am going to uh, thread the first half inch with this threading die. Uh, and in order to make sure it's flat, I'm gonna put a chuck in my uh, tailstock here. There you go. I'm gonna put a chuck in here so I have a flat surface as a reference point. So here we go. Actually, this is a terrible camera angle. Let me try, let me try this one. That's a better angle. Let's get the cross slide out of the way. Let's clean it up a little bit. Let's pull the live center. And we'll use this sort of medium sized. Get some cutting fluid. Put that on there. And start threading from this side and we'll give this a little bit of a, there we go. See, now I'm pushing this into, the, into that. That gives me this nice uh, reference point. And I gotta get the cross slide farther out of there. There we go. Now I should be able to turn it. There we go, that's something. Am I not doing anything? I'm not doing anything. Okay. So, let's get some more cutting fluid on there. Now that I've got it started, I'm gonna get everything else out of the way. This should make it a lot easier. For those of you wondering, I have cut threads on a lathe, but that is a, um, a much more trying and difficult operation, and it's just not one I think I'm ready to jump into just yet. That sound you hear each time I go forward is the sound of I'm cutting curls of metal out of the side and then I'm breaking those curls off. So you hear me, cut, break, cut, break. Cut, break. Every tapping guide I've ever read said you should, well, when you're tapping, you should tap a full revolution and then back a half. I've always found that you should not do a full revolution. I've snapped a lot of taps trying that really on this one. I'm going about an eighth of a turn and each time coming back just to make sure I've got what I need. Okay, let's just double check that. I want 1.43 to the beginnings of the threads, I think. Oh, look at how pretty that is. Wow. Let's see here. What do I got? Yeah, uh, that looks like that should get me all the way there. I'm going to chamfer the edge of that to make it look pretty. Just get a little bit of a... Good enough. Yeah, let's get a little, one little file on that operation. Okay. 
I'm very pleased with that. All right, so I've got my part turned down. Uh, it's time to just double check my measurements. I'm gonna have a nylon bearing there on the underside. Then we do thrust bearing. Thrust bearing butts right up to the table. Second thrust bearing butts right up to the table. It's chased by another nylon bearing. That way we have a little bit of softness holding it all together. And the crank comes on top of that. Yep, and a nylock nut there. So in order to have a keeper for uh, this guy, I'm gonna mill a flat on the uh, right here. And uh, then we should, once I drill a hole in here, be ready to install. Perfect. That is looking like a real professional looking part there. Ooh, shiny. All right, let's see here. That's it. The, be the more perfectly straight up and down, the more perfectly vertical I can make this hole, the better this whole thing will work. So I'm guiding it using one of my tapping drills. There we go. All right. Clean that hole up. Okay, you can of burrs. So now, it's nice and straight. So, this is the moment of truth. So let's see. Nylon nut. Rust bearing bottom. Middle and top. Okay, and then that comes up there. Then thrust bearing bottom, middle and top. Nylon washer. Oh, right, right, right. Ooh, 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 yep. I need, damn it. Be right back. All right, back. And now, that and that. That. Yeah, okay. And now I'm gonna grab, yeah. Okay, wait, wait, I need a I need a thing on that. Really dig that. Let's tighten that down. And tighten this. Yeah. That's great. I really like that. So that'll be the speed control. I know it's a little big, but it's like it's a, this is the back side of the band, so I'm never going past here, really. And if I have to pull that, I will, but I don't think I do. Uh, so now, time to make the yoke that travels on this guy. All right. Okay, this is the longest after ending of the build video ever, but I've successfully gotten my speed control, uh, I've successfully gotten my thrust bearing mounted, nylock nut locked, speed control handle in place, and I'm really pleased. I've just like, I couldn't be happier. That's a little twisted. There we go. I couldn't be happier with how this works. And I found a big, big ass half inch 18 square nut from an old piece of machine equipment I had. And it's into, so it's into this that I'm gonna put my yoke. And you see how this goes up and down? Yeah. 
So it goes up and down and that'll allow me to pressure slowly using a lever onto the trigger. So uh, I am going to drill some holes. Let's see here. I'm gonna drill some holes there, actually on that side and that side. And then I'm gonna silver solder uh, some steel pins in those holes. And then that will be my capture yoke. Yeah, for the, uh, for the speed control. Now I'm gonna try, that tap didn't grab so much as I like, so I actually have a, a, a Spiropoint 832. So I'm gonna start with the same threads, get a little bit of cutting oil on there. And, oh yeah, that's better. I'm tapping these holes because I can't just make a pin there because then I'd have to install it with the yoke and I can't take them apart and that's no good. But I do think between that and now I'll get a bottom tap action on there. Plug tap. I'll get all the way to the bottom of this matter. So, so that's my uh, yoke. Sorry, that's my yoke holder with removable 832 pins. Uh, now I'm going to make the little <whistles> yoke that holds onto those. That is a nice straight hole. Time to machine out a notch. All right. Ooh, whoops, that goes a little too deep. I'll have to get a bigger one for that. All right, so there is my yoke on the spinning nut. 
I think we could do a little bit of a test fit. All right, so it's gonna attach to the other side, like this is gonna be on that side, but there's how it goes. Yep, that goes all the way up. I am getting pretty pleased with that. That seems pretty nifty. I don't know about you, but that is a little mechanical speed control arm. Now all I have to do is cut this guy to length, attach it in here so it's going from here down to here and have a little hingy poo right there. Time for some assembly. Here is the yoke with slot. You'll see how that works in just a second. I've got to get all the positions right so I can mark them and drill them. But here comes. I'm gonna bring this up nice and high so I have a lot of room with which to bring down the speed control. I think that should do it. I think that's actually quite nice. This sits here. Right? Okay. I've got some slop here that I can uh, that I can actually indulge in. Point six two. Do a little dumb math. Point six two plus point seven five equals one point three seven. I drilled the two holes at the bottom of my yoke guide exactly three quarters of an inch apart. That makes the math easy. Uh, I need two quarter inch holes. That's what I need. All right. Now, I gotta get the Allen that fits these. I think we're actually gonna be able to do a test in a second. Okay. All right. So here, let's uh, get a close up on this. All right. So how does this work? What happens is you turn this lever, and it moves this nut up and down, bringing this yoke pressure down on the trigger there, and it's held on the back side by this little keeper here. I'm gonna see if it works right now. Let's plug it in. This is a, uh, a test of our speed control system. We have made the mods. 
Let's see here. Okay. Okay, we turned it on and it's not going. So technically, if we turn it counterclockwise, we should start pushing on the trigger. There we go. So, let's see here. Ooh! Ooh! Ha! I'm just curious about cutting at the lowest speed, what it's like. That's actually really nice. Okay, well, I was almost done, and then there was a bunch more work to do. Uh, it is now done. Today's one day build. My portable standing little bandsaw stand is maybe my favorite tool mod I have ever done. Uh, I had this handle as my crank handle for it, and uh, it was too tough to turn. This was actually twisting. It's pop metal. I mean, it's not that um, impressive. Uh, and then I noticed I had this guy right here, and I thought, ooh, let me put him in. Uh, and then I found that I had this problem, which was right here on this Steely Bob. This little, um, this little fork here, I hadn't machined it deep enough, and it was pushing against this post and causing this binding. All of this is a long way of saying, check out how easy this thing is to maneuver now. I'll turn it on. Now it's got, you'll see it says slower and faster. Watch this. Ooh. You can run it really, really slow. Or you can speed it up. Oh, yeah. There's the mechanism working. I'm really, really pleased. I think it's a nice bit of kit. It looks good. Ooh. I'm really pleased. I think it's a nice bit of kit. It looks good. I've got a carrying handle. Oh, and the cord stores nicely in this little compartment. I will use this thing for years. Thanks everyone for joining me for this one day build. See you next time.